Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey everybody, welcome again to Growing in Grace. I'm Joel Brzezinski along with Mike Kapler. All lines are open. Uh, feel free to call, <laughs> free to call in. It's uh, 1-800-GRACE to you. <laughs> it's the Growing in Grace podcast, and, uh, and in fact, we are alive, but this is not a live broadcast, of course. Uh, that would be fun, though, Joel. That, to that do a would live be cool podcast. to be able to open up the phone lines. Yeah, that would be fun if people call in. Um, then we'd have to ask for support because we would need to, I, I couldn't afford to have that kind of a line, you know, where, you know, give people out a 800 number or whatever. <laughs> <It'd> <laughs> yes, 1-800-DONATE-NOW. Be... That's the thing, you know, uh, that would be fun. Maybe someday, maybe someday we'll be able to do that. You just never know. Because, uh, you know, I listen to... Um, uh, the An- Andrew Farley live. Uh, I love his. He's got a weekly call-in show on Sirius XM, and it's also on a radio station out east as well. But then I listen to the the podcast version of that. They record that, but they do have live callers calling him in and asking questions, and I think that's a really cool thing. Um, he mentions a lot, or he has a he has a lot of you know people calling in that are truckers, uh, people who work in the transportation business in some way or another. I can relate to that because I'm a courier for a hospital, so I drive around a lot. And I uh, I imagine that as a podcast, we've got some uh, people out there listening to us while they're out there driving. So for whatever reason that popped in my head, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to people who are out there driving, uh, whether for a living or helping people or whatever you're doing. Uh, I know what it's like, life out on the road, so that's, uh, even though I get back home every day, of course, but I do uh, enjoy that, and I know that some people don't necessarily enjoy that they have to be out there logging so many miles, but if you can have some words of encouragement to listen to as you drive it along, which is what we try to do, then I know it makes it a whole lot uh, better. Anyway... Yeah, so, um, we, we wouldn't be able to take calls from truckers because we don't have one of those bleep buttons. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I guess on satellite radio, you can say anything you want anyway, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> on satellite radio. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> We'd have people falling from grace every week. Yes. No. no. <laughs> you can say anything you want, just don't take grace too far. By the way, for what we mean by falling from grace, listen to two podcasts ago, because it's not what a lot (laughs) of people think. It was kind of a joke. but uh, All right. Hey, uh, Joel, I'm kind of hoping we can get into an argument today, which (laughs) we don't do very often. I I, I was mentioning before the podcast, you know, all these these podcasts we do, you and I agree on so many things. I'd like to find something we could disagree on, but we have a hard time doing that. But today we may be taking a look at some different angles on a particular subject. The bottom line on this is even if we disagree, uh, there's what I always call a, that bottom line or that silver lining that, that we do agree on. So I'm not sure where this podcast is going to take us, but let's give it a shot. Well, let's give it a shot. I am a big St. Louis Cardinals fan, and Mike <laughs> Kepler is sadly a Chicago Cubs fan. Right there, there there's, our, there's, our, there's our pleas of disagreement. <laughs> but I think well, you had something else <laughs> Well, I'd like to see the Cardinals abolished is what I would like to see. But, uh. <laughs> well, that might happen in another hundred years when uh, when the Cubs might have a chance. But uh, when, their sta- when their stadium is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Yeah, well, Uh-oh. anyway, it's it's the law, the law. Okay, enough of this baseball talk. And yeah, we, we have some stuff. We Over the years on this podcast, we have talked about... And, and we have said with um, some certainty that uh, we be, you know, when we're when talking about the law, the holy law of God, that uh, we've said it, the law itself died, was done away with, was nailed to the cross. And um, there are some elements of truth to that, and there are some things about that that maybe we disagree on, and maybe we're seeing some things the same way. But I think it's worth talking about. Cap, you brought this up with me, and I really do think it's worth talking about, because there are places in the New Covenant scriptures, Paul's epistles, uh, where it does talk about the law. 
saying that um, you know certain things like in in Ephesians, uh, Colossians, and Romans, where it seems like it would be saying that the law itself uh, had to be done away with, had to in in some words that we've used in the past had to die, had to be or, or in other words in, in in the scriptures had to be taken out of the way, nailed to the cross. So, what do we do with all this? Did the law die, or is it simply made obsolete, or what? And what the heck does it mean to us in our lives in Christ? Cap, now you give your point, and I'll totally disagree with you. Yeah, and that, which is fine. You know, we we need we we need an honest discussion, and I think our listeners will know if we're having one or not. Uh, and I think that's one thing that you've discovered from listening to our podcast is that we're just real people talking from the heart here. So. We're not trying to agree or disagree with each other on purpose ever on this show. Um, I, I have made the statement in the past. I've just been doing some studying recently and was writing some things down, Joel. And, and uh, I've made the statement in the past on this podcast probably that the, the law was abolished. And is this a really big deal? Not by the time we get to the end of the program. Um, but I have changed my view on this a little bit in that I don't think the law was necessarily abolished, or another word for that is destroyed or killed. Um, Jesus said that he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And he did do that. He, he did fulfill the law. And, but he said he didn't come to, to destroy or abolish it, but to fulfill it. Um, Paul made the statement that the law is, in, in Romans 7, the law is holy, righteous, and good. He didn't say that it was or that it was formally that way. He, he referred to it in the present tense. He also told Timothy that the, the law, I don't have that right in front of me, but the, the law is, um, let me find it here, Joel. Hang on a second, if I can. Yeah, I'll bleep this part out. No. He also told Timothy the law is, is good if one uses it lawfully, but it wasn't meant for the, the righteous who are in Christ. Um, so he referred to it again, not as, as past tense. Um, and I, I know what Ephesians chapter 2 says, where God, I'm trying to figure out where to go with this thing here, but if I go back to Ephesians chapter 2, Paul talked about the, the Gentiles coming into the, the, the household with, with Israel for he himself is our peace, he made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two, uh, the two groups into one new man, the Jews and the Gentiles. So I used this to say, well, there it is, the, the law and the commandments were abolished, but what really was destroyed was what came in between, not the law itself, but what came between us and God. The, those requirements contained in ordinances, the, 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 the letter of the law, the, the, the certificate of debt that had been applied to us, and that had been abolished and destroyed. Here, here's the thing. We, we talked recently, I think last week, about Paul said that we don't nullify the law, we establish the law with this message of grace through faith. We don't nullify it. That word nullify is the same Greek word as found here in Ephesians chapter 2. It's translated nullify in Romans in the American Standard Bible, uh, translated abolish in Ephesians chapter 2, but it's the same Greek word. And Paul said we don't nullify the law, we don't abolish the law. So I don't think he's necessarily specifically pointing to abolish the law in Ephesians chapter 2 or having having nailed the law to the cross in Colossians chapter 2, what was nailed uh, was us in the body of Christ and the certificate of debt that the law brought to us. Remember, the law was designed to bring guilt and condemnation and cause people to realize the need for a Savior, which would be, of course, Jesus Christ. That's what the purpose of the law was. Otherwise, it was holy, righteous, and good. It had no need to die. What needed to die was us to the law, referring more specifically to the Jews who, who were in that law relationship. We as Gentiles were never under that relationship with the law, so it doesn't apply as much to us anyway, but it did to the Jews back at that time. So, Joel, I yield the floor. See, Cap, you are half right about things. 
<laughs> but, yeah, because I totally, that. I totally, I totally see what you're saying, and I can, I can go along with that. And I won't even say I can go along with that to the point. Uh, to a point, I'll say I can totally go along with what you're saying, and at the same time, see, I don't want to confuse people with what I'm saying here. At the same time, I can see the other side of the coin, the various things that we have said in the past regarding the loss, you know, such as if you continue on uh, reading in Ephesians 2, you know, by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, and he might reconcile them both into one body through the cross, having put to death the enmity, and he, he, he defines enmity, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments. In, in, the, he, in verse 15, he defines the enmity as the law of commandments, and he says it's been put to death. And so I can see that what you're saying is that it's not the law of God that was put to death, but it was what was enmity to us was the guilt, the uh, the consequences of, of breaking the law, what was against what, us. Right, uh, what the commandment demanded, that was destroyed. The, and the commandment demanded perfection. Yeah, and so the the consequences of breaking the law and the all of that, um, it could be said that that's what it, it means here in Ephesians, that that's what was put to death, and... Uh, when you're saying, you know, Paul in in Romans 7 talks about how the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Uh, and we were talking about last week from the end of Romans 3, where it says, do we, you know, take away the law? You know, we establish the law. And we talked about how what that means last week is that by establishing the law, we we realize that the law is good, just, and holy, and there's nothing that we can do to keep it. We can't keep it. So by, by turning to faith, we establish the purpose of the law, which was to bring right. guilt and condemnation. And so the, on the one side of the coin, it can be said that, well, that law, it had to be taken out of the way, according to the wording of Ephesians and Colossians in a place there. It could, it could be said that the law had to die itself, on the other hand, I see what you're saying. I'm I'm tracking with you, not fully, not fully, <laughs> but I'm I'm I. But I see what you're saying. But I do, and I didn't realize how time was getting away. We got just a minute left here. But I I see also what you're saying that the bottom line, and maybe we'll have to continue on with this conversation because the bottom line, in case people aren't really figuring out what we're talking about here, the Christian, the believer, is not under the law. Neither one of us is saying that. God released us whether the law itself died, or whether we died to the law, or both, or just one or the other. The truth is that we're not under the law at all. The law has no place in the life of the believer, because the believer has died to the law. As you were saying, Gentiles were never even under the law. And so there's no place for law in the life of, of the believer. And since we are out of time for this one, I, you know, um, I'm sure you got more to say about this, Cap. And so <laughs> stay tuned for part two next week on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.